belief um, was only here for a short while, but I believe that he had a purpose. Um, and, you know, there are some people that um, just stick around just to serve one purpose. And I believe Khalif served it in his short amount of time on this earth. Um, he served his purpose. Um, and because of him, things have to shift and things are shifting and things are being brought to the forefront. And so I just thank God for him and his courageous um, bravery, um, being adamant, being relentless, um, even in the midst of him being fearful and scared and hurt and broken. Um, he started a revolution. Hey everybody, it's Old School Hard back with another review for you guys. So first things first, I need you to hit the like button down below. If you are not a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe to this channel so that you can be updated on new videos that come out. Um, if you have not gotten a chance to already, please go back and watch the video that I did on Sunday uh, on the uh, month review of Dr. Sabi's lifestyle diet change that I am doing. Um, please make sure you like that as well and share that with others. If you're thinking about doing that diet, that is the video to watch. If you want an honest, open review on um, changing your lifestyle to Dr. Sabi's plan. Uh, this video I'm so excited to be doing because I have not done a TV review since the new edition movie came out in January. And if you have not gotten a chance to uh, look at that, please go ahead and look at that as well. Uh, so I'm excited to be doing another review because it has been quite some time. Um, so uh, I have actually been uh, looking for something else to review and I've been wanting to do something a little bit more educational, a little bit more um, along the lines of something that we can discuss with each other, uh, something that you can discuss with the, your family and friends. Um, I have stated on um, a previous video that I want this channel to be a channel where we dialogue about our issues, uh, concerns in our community, and I want to make sure that I keep that going some way, somehow. So, um, I finally found something that uh, was something that we most definitely need to discuss and is a grave concern in our community. And so this review is going to be on um, Khalif uh, Browder's documentary that is on Spike uh, TV. Um, this is going to be a six part series on Spike TV. So this is part one of that. Uh, there will be five more episodes of this running every Wednesday, um, nine to 10, um, nine in my area and I live in Chicago. So please check your local listing so that you're able to watch that or uh, record that. Uh, once again, that's going to be on Spike and BET simultaneously. Um, and uh, this is actually brought to you by uh, Jay-Z, who is the producer of this uh, six-part documentary. And I just want to say kudos to Jay-Z for doing this. I'm not that big of a rap fan. I really do love rap, but I can't say I have a whole catalog of rap music. But I will say this, uh, Jay-Z is doing some real grown man things right now, and I am just loving him. And I'm so happy that he um, gave us this documentary. I did hear that he was doing this a couple of months ago, so I've been waiting for this documentary. But I did not know it was going to come out so quickly. Um, <clears throat> but I think in part that has to do with the fact that Jay-Z is like running 50 million things. And also um, he is giving us another documentary on HBO soon on the Emmett Till story. And so I'm so excited about that. But right now we have this uh, Khalif Browder documentary um, that he has given us. And so I just want to say kudos to him for that. So, um, this is part one, uh, review of that. Um, and, uh, let me just backtrack really quickly. So Khalif, I heard about through a uh, different news outlets a long time ago. Um, but I was reintroduced to Khalif Browder, 
um, watching the 13th documentary that Ava DuVernay did for Netflix. Um, I did do a review on that and I will post that below. But that documentary basically uh, talked about mass incarceration. Um, we all know, and if we, if you do not know, um, black men in particular um, have uh, uh, their prison sentences, um, jail time has increased um, since uh, Jim Crow. <coughs> And um, Ava's, Ava DuVernay's documentary uh, pretty much addressed that issue, how um, just throughout the decades, um, probably starting in the, the 60s, it started to increase, especially when Reagan got here in the 80s. When Reagan got here, our jail sentences, our male incarceration went up completely. Black male incarceration went up completely. So basically, that is what Ava DuVernay's documentary was about. And she featured Khalif um, Browder on that documentary and his story. And um, I was once again reintroduced to it. And uh, he pulled my heartstring. He um, made me feel... Um, just his story just just overwhelmed me and I had so much compassion and I just wanted to know everything about him and I'm just so glad that Jay-Z decided to do a documentary on him because I was literally looking up everything trying to figure out who this young man is what the story is about you know so I'm glad that he did this. Now, uh, Ava DuVernay's um, documentary, um, I did also state that it reminded me and it heavily had material from Michelle Alexander's book, um, The New Gemma Crow. And I also showed that book in that um, the review that I did for the 13th documentary. Um, and The New Jim Crow basically just chronologically explains um, how um, since Jim Crow, um, just different things were put in place to um, put uh, males into prison. Um, if there was a low educational, um, low education, then the next step for the black male was um, incarceration. Um, <coughs> and it talks about just how with each president, um, our numbers increase by just systematically uh, putting things in place. So um, uh, crack, you know, if you sold crack, if you did crack, uh, you were put in prison for at, um, for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and just how those numbers have increased. And so um, if you have not gotten a chance to read that book, please go get Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow. And if you have not seen 13 documentary, please go ahead and watch that. But um, ever since I've seen that documentary, I... Um, I just have had a heart for Khalid's story and just felt um, just intrigued to know more and more about him. So the part one episode um, is basically um, giving you an introduction of who Khalif Browder is. Um, and I love that it started with him actually talking with him um, actually like moving around and different things. So we get to see Khalif when it first starts um, and we get to know more about him. And I love the way that part one begins because it actually, um, uh, when you watch it, it basically talks about, you know, um, him being incarcerated in Rikers Island for three years at the age of 16. Uh, for a crime he did not commit where there was no evidence on him or anything. And so basically, <coughs> uh, this starts out talking about the deposition that he had against the state of New York for wrongfully, wrongfully convicting him and then making him serve time in prison as a 16 year old for three years. And they talk about how depositions are really, really, really crappy because they get all deep into your personal life and try to figure out just something to pinpoint so that the blame is placed off them and put on you. And so this deposition, uh, a deposition covers all of that. Um, we saw that with OJ Simpson. We saw a little bit of his deposition and how they went into everything. Um, and so basically a deposition pretty much is just an open 
case, an open dialogue between you and who you're suing. And they just pretty much dig up your past life and all everything that you've been through, just to try to discredit you and just try to disprove you. And so the part one uh, of this documentary is basically a deposition and introduction into his life. So we learned so um, different factors about Khalif that I didn't even know that I even though I've read pretty much everything I could, um, I didn't even know. I did not know that Khalif was um, adopted by Mrs. Browder um, and that his mother um, was a crackhead. And she had already had two kids that were given to Mrs. Browder. And those kids' names were... Um, Dion, Kamal, and then she got Khalif. And like I said, she got Khalif because she already had the other two kids. And so automatically, because those kids were already in the system, she was uh, the mother of Khalif was not going to get him because she was a crackhead. So she already the kid uh, Khalif was already given to Miss Browder. Um, Miss Browder did have other kids. She was married to a guy, and they divorced when Khalif was about twelve years old. Um, so they explain that Khalif has already been in the system. Um, his family, family members and friends give a little brief description of who Khalif was. He was a bubbly, uh, funny kid. They keep saying that he was funny, that he was like muscle bound when he was younger, but he was funny. He was a funny kid. Um, one of the, his, uh, teachers, um, in 10th grade explains that he would only come to her class, that he really wasn't much of a student. He really wasn't one to pay much attention, but, um, she does remember him and, uh, he would actually just go to her class. Um, uh, a lot of people explain that he was a smart child, but that he was also very compassionate, um, and I was almost brought to tears with the, one of his friends because she was just explaining that he boosted her self-confidence and he made her feel good. Um, and uh, that was really sad to hear, you know, because I just think about like what Khalif could have been uh, had he not been put in the situation that he did. So <coughs> we learned, um, you know, a little bit about his character. Uh, we learned that um, once Mrs. Browder divorced her husband um, when Khalif was 12, that's when Khalif's um, whole attitude changed. And of course, when you're young like that and you're, impu you're um, in that puberty stage, that is a difficult age. And to have a parent, two parents divorced is difficult. And so that is the point where Khalif shifted. Um, and they say he started to hang out um, more so with the crew, hang out outside with other people, try to develop a family on the outside with people who he thought was just like him. Um, <clears throat> which we know, you know, that never turns out good. That never will turn out good. And so, um, you know, they talk about how Khalif, you know, started to hang out with the wrong people, you know, and how um, he, uh, you know, just being really childish, being a child, you know, not knowing any better. He ended up robbing like a bakery uh, truck and taking it on a joy ride with a couple of other people. So he, you know, already had a little bit of history with the, um, <coughs> with the court system. Um, and so uh, they talked about that, but he was really, really super young. Um, <coughs> It was really, really super young. And so, um, you know, Mrs. Browder explains that, you know, she was like, I couldn't believe that he did that. And, I, you know, I was worried about him. But at the same time, you know, he was really young. You know, he, he had outside influences and they took a joy ride. And so um, basically, um, you know, they explain, you know, uh, Khalif, uh, you know, not making the right decisions, not saying that he was a bad child, you know, and I don't think that he was a bad child. I think he was just misguided, you know, when, you know, something significant hits, hits your life, you know, you try to adjust in your own way, even as a child, even though, you know, 
you know, in reality, you know, most people want you to stay being a child. Sometimes, you know, you try to adjust to maturity in your own way to try to fix the situation or try to cope with the situation. I believe that's what Khalif was trying to do. Um, so uh, he was raised in the Bronx. I think I said that he was raised in the Bronx. Um, and they just talk about basically, you know, what what that really is. And what I really love is that Jay-Z uh, actually did an interview in part one where he explains, you know, just the life, um, how hard it was living in the Bronx, um, you know, being around um, other people, outside influences and, you know, trying to cope with all that's around you. Um, and so it was good to see him try to explain that because we all know that Jay-Z went through a similar situation where, you know, basically he was trying to cope. He was trying to make it. He was selling drugs himself, you know. And um, so it was good to see him do a little bit of an interview as well. And then I get to the part where, you know, this whole story basically where we come to know Khalif Browder, May 10th to, I mean, May 15th, 2010. Let me make sure that address me, <laughs> that date is correct. May 15th, 2010. On May 15th, 2010, um, Khalif Browder is walking home with his friend. It's two o'clock in the morning. Um, some police officers stop him and say, hey, we need you to come in. Um, we need to question you about a robbery. So basically, that's what they think that they're doing. Um, and it's so crazy because this guy was like, you know, we always get questioned. I think his brother was saying that Keon, his brother was like, you know, we always get questioned. But, you know, at the end of the day, we come home, you know, the cops always stop us around here. It's like normal life. And that's just so crazy to me that you could be walking home at two o'clock in the morning trying to get to your house and, um, you could be stopped about a robbery <laughs> and it could be any two black guys, any guys you want to pick, two black dudes, two Hispanic guys, you know, could just be walking and, hey, look, uh, somebody said somebody was robbed. Y'all need to come down to the station. So Khalif at the time is only 16. And what I don't understand is, and they said New York is, um, you could be tried 16 at 16 as an adult. But to me, Try at 16 as an adult should be murder cases or something like that. Not, oh, somebody said you robbed a backpack. So on May 15, 2010, they bring him in for question about robbing a backpack. Uh, like I said, I do not understand why Mrs. Browder was not called down to the station because Khalif was 16 years old. And that really takes me off because it's not a murder case. It's a backpack. So to me, in that situation, mom should have been there. Mom should have been called down, but they did not. They do not have to call them in New York. He's 16, so he was of age to be questioned. And so they asked him, you know, do you recall still in the bag? You know, did you rob a bag? It had $1,000. It had $700 in there. It had a laptop and some other stuff. <laughs> Khalif was like, no, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, I'm pretty sure, you know, I was on my way home. No, I don't have anything to do with it. And so they continue to question him. And he's like, do you, do they ask, him, do you understand the charges that are against you? And he's like, no, I don't, you know, I don't have anything to do with this. Well, you know, and they keep explaining to him, you know, you are here because you are accused of robbing a, a backpack. Okay, it's <laughs> a backpack, exactly. So um, what's so crazy is, <clears throat> you know, they're questioning the person that has alleged that his backpack is stolen, and then they're questioning police. And there's already inconsistencies in this, according to the police report, because the police report says that this happened on May 15, 2010. But the guy said in... in um, the, the guy who was alleging this happened to him said this happened May 2nd of 2010, which means that Khalif was nowhere near, no, not walking or anything. He says, I'm pretty, I, that day I was pretty much at home. So there's already inconsistencies. But because, because if a person says, well, I think this may be the person, then they can be charged. And so basically, basically, the the person who alleged 
that Khalif did this basically said, I think that that might have been the person that stole my bag two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever the day was. So basically they arrest Khalif. And so um, the uh, Mrs. Browder is says that um, his bail was three thousand dollars, which, of course, you know, three thousand dollars is too just really expensive. And if you know anything about the state of what black people are going through right now, we're really poor. We're thirty seven point five percent of the poor population and we're the highest Poor population for minorities. That's over Hispanics, Asians, any other people. We are 37.5% of the poor population. So clearly the mom did not have the money to bail him out. Now the bond was $900 and Miss Browder, and I did not know this, explains that <coughs> she didn't have the $900. Um, they tried to ask the husband, but for some odd reason, he just went along with the fact that, well, I, I think Khalif's a bad kid. I'm not giving up $900, even though he had a solid, excuse me, he had a solid job in order to do so. He says, I'm not giving up $900. So he, he doesn't give it, he doesn't give up the $900. So Miss Browder says that she goes and asks the neighbor for the money and the neighbor gets it to him. It's just $900. So they go to a bail bondsman. Um, and while the, the uh, bondsman is looking up the information, he goes, well, the uh, bond is denied. There is no bond in this case. And they're trying to figure out, well, why is there no bond? And the reason why there is no bond is because Khalif was already in the system and he violated, violated his probation um, when he, uh, this is when he uh, took the bakery car on a joyride. So basically there is no bond and he is sent to Rikers Island for three years. So this is part one of the documentary. Uh, so basically, like I said, this is just an introduction. So <coughs> you find out a little bit who Khalif is, um, the city that he lived in, and then that fateful night, May 15, 2010, where he is questioned, then automatically put in jail. Um, and so um, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, I'm just really, really heated at this point because I'm trying to figure out, you know, anybody can be questioned and then, you know, oh, you know, I think it's this person, you know, so... If you don't know for sure, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how do you how do you automatically get put in jail if the person doesn't know for sure, you know, who that person is. Oh, I think it may be him. And then for the officers to not follow up on anything, on anything um, in regards uh, to, to this the case. frustration is that he's 16. He's not there for murder. He's not there for rape. He's not there for molestation or anything like that. He is there for allegedly stealing a backpack. And yet Mrs. Browder was not called. That infuriates me to my core <laughs> because it's like, what do you mean? He's like, you didn't call her for this. You know, and then what's so crazy is the police make it seem like, you know, they're just coming in for questioning really quickly. Just come in for questioning really quickly. You know, we just want to ask you a couple of questions. You know, that that's it. You know, it'll just, it'll just be a minute. You know, this is routine. And the sad part is that everybody on this documentary was like, this is routine. They, they asked us a question. We go down there. We talk to them. And then they, you know, let us go. And that's what they thought this was going to be like. Okay, we'll ask you a question and then we'll go. And um, that's just not how it worked out. And Khalif was adamant. I didn't have nothing to do with it. Like, I didn't steal nobody's backpack. They didn't go to the house and check to see... <laughs> if the book bag was at the house, if he had been spending any money lately, if the laptop or whatever was in there had been uh, sent to a pond and his name was on there, they didn't do any follow up work. And so it's just crazy just how this even began um, that New York didn't even take New York police didn't even take time to uh, check any evidence. And so uh, this is just part one. I know part two, three, four, and five, and six are going to be even more heated for me and emotional for me because we all know what happens to Khalif in the end. Um, so I already know that I'm going, 
I was emotional today just uh, rereading some of the news articles and some of the uh, clips that I found. I was already emotional. And so I can only imagine how emotional I'm going to be watching the rest of this. Um, and so I hope that you guys are paying attention. If you want to discuss anything on this page, on this review, please go ahead and do so. Um, if you don't know very much about him, please um, go to Google, put in his name and look at some of the articles that were written on him. But Washington Post is the first one, I believe. The Washington Post was the first to write an article on his story. Um um, and so I look forward to watching part two of the documentary. Please leave your comments down below. Let's discuss this. Let's talk about it with our family. Please remember to read the book. Um, um, if you have not gotten a chance to already uh, look at the documentary, the 13th. And if you want information that goes prior to that, a great documentary on YouTube is called Slavery by Another Name that I believe PBS did. Um, I will list that link below as well. This is Old School Heart. Uh, have a good day. Please like, comment and subscribe and share this with others. I will see you on my next video. Uh, have a good night.